So now I am very pleased to introduce you to someone who is unmatched in her capacity to speak about the extraordinary contributions of young people. Jayathma Vikmanayaki was appointed as secret the Secretary General's Envoy on Youth in 2017 at the age of 26. And over the last six years, she has brought the United Nations closer to young people across the globe and has worked to ensure that youth in all their diversity have a voice within the UN. Jayathma has expanded the UN youth's engagement and advocacy efforts across sustainable development, human rights, peace and security, and humanitarian action. And she has also served as a representative of and advisor to the Secretary General. Jayathma, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, Melissa. And first of all, let me also join you in expressing my solidarity with the young people of Morocco and Libya, who are um, not only victims of the of the natural disasters, but also are in the front lines, often without the tools and the resources that are necessary, um, fighting for their communities and rescuing their peers and, and uh, being a ray of hope. Um, and resilience um, right now that the world so desperately needs. I'm thrilled to be with you here today, surrounded by the incredible hope, enthusiasm, and the commitment that all of you young people bring to the United Nations. Um, in my eyes, you are the torchbearers for peace, for human rights and for sustainable development. Um, so it is my pleasure to join you in celebrating this year's International Day of Peace, while today is also the last day I'm serving as the UN's envoy on youth, ending six years of my tenure, uh, trying to bring the United Nations closer to young people and young people closer to the UN. So there is no better way to wrap up my mandate than to spend it with an incredible group of young people like yourselves. Allow me to come back to the topic and ask all of you to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and imagine your idea of a peaceful world. What does peace look like to you? What does peace feel like to you? Now, for me, it is a world where every young person can attend school without the fear of violence or conflict, a world where every young person can do a job that they love, where every young person can love or marry or live with the person that they choose to love, where everyone can advocate safely for their rights, and where everyone is safe from the impacts of climate change, where everyone has equal opportunities for a decent living everywhere. Now, everywhere I travel in the world, I ask this question from young people. And often, the answer that I get is not the absence of arms or conflicts or, or violence. It is the interpretation of young people that peace is something bigger, peace is something broader, peace is having the freedom to live our lives the way that we choose to live. Now, I was born in a country that was affected by war, and 19 years of my life I lived in a country that was going through a brutal civil conflict. Um, during my time in, back home in Sri Lanka, I often wondered why were my people fighting? What is the reason behind the conflict in my country? Um, we look the same, we eat the same things, we care about the same things, so why are we fighting with each other? And I often found that the root causes for the conflict, for war, was much deeper in our societies. It went down to issues like discrimination. It went down to issues like poverty, inequalities in our societies. That is why I think, as Melissa very correctly said in her remarks, we cannot differentiate peace from development. If we are to achieve a peaceful world, then we must achieve the sustainable development goals. And we must put all of our efforts to now bring back to track 
and really, as the SDG says, rescue the sustainable development goals so that through education, through equal opportunities, through a better health system, through decent living condition, by addressing climate change, we can bring our world to be a much peaceful, more peaceful place. Now, all of the young people in the room, you are part of the 1.9 billion young people living in the world right now, and you play a vital role in making this vision a reality. It's not about doing something grand or complex, it's about taking small steps and making choices that align with these goals. Now, on this podium, um, we have amazing set of youth advocates. I know Saad and um, Zia and, and Kapi very well, and I'm, I have no doubt that Mariama is is amazing as well. And if you ask all of them, they, they started by small actions, by individual actions, thinking about something that they could do with the skills that they had, with the platform that they had in order to create a change in their communities. And I hope that today you get to learn from them and go out of the United Nations with at least one action in your mind that you can do to help us achieve the SDGs and put our world back on track to be a more peaceful, just, and secure place. Now, I'm talking about individual actions, but also actions by governments and institutions like the United Nations are equally, even if not more important. Now, if you look at young people and peace, the UN Security Council over the years has adopted multiple resolutions on youth, peace, and security. Now, almost uh, seven years after the adoption of the first resolution on youth peace and security, only four governments today have concrete plans on including young people on national peace and security issues. So we have 193 governments who are members of the UN, but only four has concrete plans. So when you go back home today, I hope that you start advocating also with your governments, with your ministers, with the high-level officials in your countries to continue to put resources and concrete plans on how they wish to engage young people in making sure that we um, implement the commitments that we have made here at the United Nations, including in the security. Security Council. So with that thought and with that request, let me wrap up my remarks and thank you once again for the incredible support that you have extended to me and my team over the years. And I look forward um, to all of the great things that you will achieve at the United Nations for Young People. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jayatma. And as you are transitioning into a no new role, I really want to thank you again for your extraordinary service in supporting the creation also of a new UN Youth Office. Um, in line with the vision of the Secretary General as foreseen in his Our Common Agenda report, this new Youth Office will build on your exemplary work and that of your, the previous uh, Youth Envoy, Ahmed al Hendawi. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And really good luck in your new role. You'll find out soon where she's going. <laughs> in the family. Very good.